It's, uh, it's okay. It's not great. No, it's, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not the most amazing piece of English literature in several years, but it's, it's okay. You know, I think I'm fine with okay. It doesn't make any sense with the rest of the book, though. No, not yet. I'll rewrite the rest. My sister said she'd go back to the publisher and request more time. Why? I don't know. It's awfully sweet, though. No, why did you change the book? Lots of reasons. I realized I just couldn't do it. Because he's real? Because it's a book about a man who doesn't know he's about to die and then dies. But if the man does know he's going to die and dies anyway, dies, dies willingly, knowing he could stop it, then, I mean, isn't that the type of man you want to keep alive? As Harold took a bite of Bavarian sugar cookie, he finally felt as if everything was going to be okay. Sometimes, when we lose ourselves in fear and despair, in routine and constancy, in hopelessness and tragedy, we can thank God for Bavarian sugar cookies. And fortunately, when there aren't any cookies, we can still find reassurance in a familiar hand on our skin or a kind and loving gesture. Or a subtle encouragement. Or a loving embrace. Or an offer of comfort. Not to mention hospital gurneys. And nose plugs. And uneaten Danish. And soft spoken secrets. And Fender Stratocasters. And maybe the occasional piece of fiction. And we must remember that all these things, the nuances, the anomalies, the subtleties, which we assume only accessorize our days, are in fact here for a much larger and nobler cause. They are here to save our lives. I know the idea seems strange, but I also know that it just so happens to be true. And so it was. A wristwatch saved Harold Crick.